If you haven't done so yet, please make sure you pause the video and try to answer the questions on your own first before listening on. Our first step in finding the volume of this solid is to sketch the region that is enclosed by the four given curves. So in red here, we have the curve defined by y equals e to the x. Right here is x equals negative 1. Here we have x equals positive 1. And then the x-axis is defined as y equals 0. And since we're rotating this region about the x-axis, what we have to do is imagine spinning this region around the x-axis to form a three-dimensional solid. And it's often helpful to draw a reflection of your enclosed region, shown here in purple, about the axis that you're rotating around, in this case, the x-axis. So in other words, we're going to go ahead and reflect this shaded region across the x-axis just to see what this solid would look like. And so we've gone ahead and done that. We can see that our solid would look something like a speaker, perhaps, or a megaphone. You can use your imagination for that. But our goal is to find the volume of that solid. And the best way to do that is to select a point anywhere along the main curve, which in this case was y equals e to the x. So perhaps we can choose a point right about there. And from that point, what we want to do is draw a cylindrically shaped cross section. So we essentially draw a circle that travels from our curve all the way to the opposite side. And then from that we want to draw a cylinder. So a cylinder has some thickness, and so it might look something like that. Not the greatest drawing of a cylinder, but that would be a rough approximation. And what we'll do is set up an expression for the volume of this cylindrical cross-section here. We know that the volume of a cylinder is given by pi times radius squared times its height. Now, taking a look at our cylinder here, we can see that the radius of that cylinder would be this measurement right here. And since that measurement is a vertical measurement, we could label that y. And then we have the height of the cylinder, which is a very small dimension. It's this little height right here. And if we look carefully, we can see that that is a horizontal measurement. But because it's so tiny, we're not going to call it x. We're going to simply call it dx. We use the dx notation whenever we're measuring a length that is very, very minute, very tiny. So then coming back to the volume of this cylinder, we would have pi times the radius, which we said was y, squared, and then multiplied by the height, which we just said was dx. Now that would give us the volume of one cylinder here, but of course we don't want the volume of just this one cylinder. We want to find the volume of a bunch of cylinders that would be enclosing our solid region. So you don't have to draw all these cylinders. We're just doing so now to show you that if we found the volume of all of those cylinders and then added them together, we would indeed get the volume of our solid. Well, to calculate the volume of essentially an infinite number of cylinders, what we do is we integrate. And so we're going to integrate this expression. And we do that from our lower x value of negative 1 to our upper x value of positive 1. And by doing that, we obtain the volume of all of those cylinders, and hence the volume of our region. Now, we can simplify this expression, because right now we have an expression y, but we're trying to integrate with respect to x. We never want to have an inconsistency in variables like this. But luckily, we know that y is equal to e to the x. So we're going to come in there and replace that y with e to the x. Don't forget to square it. And by doing that, we now have a consistency in our variable. We have x in our expression, and then we're integrating with respect to x. Now let's go ahead and square e to the x. When we square, we're going to multiply those exponents right there. And of course, that would give us e to the 2x. And since pi is a constant, it can be removed to the outside of the integral. And we are now set to integrate e to the 2x. Now to do that, it's going to be helpful to review the rule for integrating e to the kx, where k would be any constant. It turns out that the integral of e to the kx is simply 1 over k times e to the kx. And that's a useful rule to review because that's going to help us integrate our current expression over here. So we would have, following this rule, we're going to have pi multiplied, now our k in this case is a 2, so we're going to have 1 over 2 
e to the 2x, and we'll be integrating that from negative 1 to positive 1. We could simplify a little bit by multiplying the pi times 1 half. That's going to give us pi over 2. And then we'll go ahead and we'll plug in the upper limit of integration first. And so we're going to have e raised to the 2 multiplied by positive 1, and then we subtract, and then we plug in the lower limit. So e raised to the power of 2 multiplied by negative 1. Now, of course, 2 times 1 is 2, and 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. And this would give us the answer, the final volume of that solid region that we obtained by spinning around the x-axis. Some teachers might want you to simplify because they might not prefer negative exponents, but that would just be dependent on your particular professor. So if they didn't like negative exponents, we could actually rewrite this e to the negative 2 by moving this entire e to the negative 2 to the denominator of the fraction. So we would have e raised to the positive 2 in the denominator. We need a placeholder up here in the numerator, so we would have a 1 there. So that would be an alternative way to write it. We could also find a common denominator and do many other things with this, but I would say that either this form of the answer or this form of the answer would be acceptable.